I guess just to open things up, we'd like to talk a little bit about the, the mission statement for March of Dimes and what, um, what March of Dimes does. Well, March of Dimes leads to the health, uh, leads to the fight for the health of all moms and babies. You know, we believe in a world where every mom and every baby is healthy, regardless of um, economics, where they live, anything. We believe every mom and every baby should be healthy. Oh, that's a that's that's a great uh, cause. I have no doubt about it. Um, can we talk a little bit about? Um, I know obviously um, we're in unique times these days uh, with uh, this current situation with COVID nineteen, and um, I know that March of Dimes has been around quite a long time. In fact, yeah. um, you had mentioned to me that this is your fiftieth year. Would you like um, to talk a little bit about that? Well, March of Dimes has actually been around for 82 years. This year was going to be the 50th anniversary of our fundraising walk. We were the first organization to start doing fundraising walks. And March for Babies was supposed to happen on Oahu last Saturday. Um, but, of course, because of COVID-19, we, we can no longer gather in large groups. So um, it would have been, it's, well, it is our 50th anniversary of our, of our fundraising walk. So we're going virtual, um, and on May 15th, we're going to do, I think it's going to be done through Facebook Live, we're going to do um, a get-together with all our supporters across the country to, to celebrate um, March for Babies, our 50th anniversary, and um, our families and all the work we do in our communities. That sounds amazing. You know, um, when we talked a little bit before, and that's one of the things I found very fascinating, is we all know March of Dimes as this large national agency that provides these services uh, for mothers and their babies. But you also do a lot here locally, and um, I'd like you to talk a little bit about that. Sure. Um on a local level, we have one of our one of the things that I love is our program at Kapiolani Hospital. Um, we have a March of Dimes staff person who actually works with the NICU there, and when those wonderful doctors and nurses are taking care of those fragile little babies, um, the parents are pretty fragile as well. And so our March of Dimes staff person is there to support the families. Um, we do a lot of different things for them. We do education hours. We do bedside support. We have fun activities for the families. And um, during this time of COVID, they have to be so careful at the hospitals that now only you know one parent is allowed to stay in the NICU with their baby. And our March of Dimes staff person, Melissa, is no longer allowed to go into the hospital. So we've been trying to find as many ways as we can of how to help continue to help these families. Um, they're, they're pretty isolated when you're in your baby's room all alone, you know, day in and day out. So we've been providing food for them. Um, we've had people making us cloth face masks for the parents. I've managed to purchase a bunch of March of Dimes um, hand sanitizers that we've gotten to them. We've put together some activities that they can do while they're sitting in their room. Um, we've gotten donations from, from um, some of our, our supporters. We've got baby products that we're going to be supplying to them. Um, we've got books. And then, then for the NICU staff, um, we're also supplying snacks and food, but um, um, Melissa went to Iolani School, and they were making those plastic face masks. So yeah. she went to those, and she, she's donating them to the NICU staff there. So we're just continuing to do as much as we can. Um, March of Dimes jumped on this right away, and, and we knew we weren't going to be able to be there in person to support the family. So they just put together um, a series of education hours that the uh, that the NICU parents can access um, via, um, I think they're doing a Facebook Live. So oh. we've got these education hours we're going to be supplying. Since we can't do them in person, we're going to be doing them through Facebook Live for the NICU families. And any NICU family um, can participate that, in them. You know, we also have general um, uh, Facebook Lives that we're doing that can, um, anybody can join in as well. 
So we're working on a lot of different ways to <clears throat> continue to help these families and to be there to support them in any way we can. That's really amazing. What, uh, when you talk about education, what uh, type of education are you providing for the families? Yeah, some of our, we, you know, we always have a session called um, Getting Ready to Take Your Baby Home. There's a lot of information that they need to know, and there's a lot of things they need to do before they can leave the hospital. Um, we have uh, classes on breastfeeding. We have classes on caring for yourself when you're in the NICU, classes on how to care for your baby when your baby is in the NICU. Um, just quite a variety of classes that, that we do. And we do fun stuff. We do scrapbooking where we get pictures of their babies and, and we do scrapbooking with them. Um, we've done baby showers because a lot of these moms, they have their babies so early they never got to have their baby shower. So we'll do baby showers for them. We do holiday parties. Um, so we, we try to give them some normalcy um, and, and some distraction and do some fun things with them. That's so great. You know, um, at a time like that, I know it's a very um, stressful time for the family because they're dealing with a situation that not every family has to go through. So um, I would imagine that there's some form of emotional support there and talking them through what uh, what's happening and what's going to how your your organization's going to be there for them in order to sort of see them through this this process yeah um we're um we've had you know because of HIPAA laws we had to be very careful on how we proceed um so Marja dimes has worked with zoom to find ways to have a uh, really good security so and, and we just kind of got that taken care of and so now um our melissa our nikki specialist will be able to do zoom sessions with these families and, um, and I know the hospital ha has great um, social workers there to help the families. And, it, you know, they, they need a lot of support. You know, it, it, you know having a new baby um, is supposed to be the most exciting thing that, that happens in your life. And, but when you have a baby that's born premature, um, you know, I, I can speak for myself. Um, I had, I've been with the March 9th for 25 years. That's and amazing. Yeah, I've been I've been um, in that NICU many times met with family, but uh, just about five years ago, my grandson was born premature, and I was there in the delivery room when the doctors were bagging him, getting him to breathe. He was born seven weeks early, um, and then down in the NICU, you can see from the the screen the tubes and the wires and uh, even though I'd been in there so many times, it just didn't prepare me for the feelings that emerged, uh, especially a feeling of helplessness. You know, you expect your grandchild or baby to be born, and they're put in your arms, and you're in the hospital a couple days, and, and you take them home, and you've got this, you know, a healthy seven, eight-pound baby, you know. But when a baby, Johnny was born um, at four and a half pounds, um, so... He, he was a little guy, so you know we see babies that are born a pound, a pound and a half, and they're just they're just these little fighters. Johnny spent a month in the NICU, but that feeling of helplessness is something no new parent should ever feel when they're when they're seeing their new baby or their new grandchild. And um, mm -hmm. it it was it was really I don't know. It's hard to explain the the feeling of of helplessness when you're looking at this at this little life. Um, so, you know that that made me even more committed to um, you know the fight that we have to end prematurity. Uh, Marcia Dine is doing research. We have um, five prematurity research centers in the United States and one in um, London. Um, over 10% of babies are born premature, one in 10. In Hawaii, it's about 10.3% of babies born premature here. And that, that equates to, oh, around 1,800 babies that are being born premature in Hawaii. Um, wow. And, you know, and some people think, oh, well, the baby's just small. They need to, you know, just gain some weight and grow. But, you know, that's not 
that's not the case. Um, you know, their lungs are underdeveloped. Um, you know, they can have uh, so many different health problems. And the very, very tiny micro preemies, they're, they're just miracles. Um, but sadly, not all babies do survive. You know, 90% of preemies used to die, but now more than 70% survive because of the March of Dimes. Um, March of Dimes started newborn intensive care units. And um, that was back around in the, I guess around 1970 or so, we started newborn int intensive care units across the country to care for babies that are born with birth defects or born premature. And we pr helped provide uh, the funding to start the first one at Kapiolani. And we are, one of our researchers developed a, a, a treatment called surfactant therapy. And what that is, is when the last few weeks of pregnancy, um, <clears throat> the baby's lungs develop this, excuse me, <clears throat> this substance called surfactant, which helps their lungs be able to expand so they can breathe. Well, when they're born premature, that substance isn't in there. So well, one of our researchers developed a way to... Um, in, uh, breathe in, where they can get for surfactant into the baby's lungs so they can intubate the babies and help them start breathing. And some of these things, you know, have saved thousands of babies of li lives every year. And um, it's just so important that we find out the causes of why this happens. You know, most, most of these moms um, were not at high risk. And their doctor... You know, they they take their vitamins, they go visit their doctor every month, and um, their doctor's going, wow, you're doing great, baby's doing great, see you next month. And then all of a sudden the doctor's getting a call from the hospital saying, hey, we have a patient of yours here, and it's a patient they didn't expect to see for one or two months. So the research to find out why we're having um, premature babies is so important. And one of our research centers um, recently developed a blood test that, with 85% accuracy, it can tell if a mom is going to have a premature baby. Doctors yeah. were predicting that before. So we're working from to get that um, through trials and then out, out to um, the, the doctor so it's something, uh, a treatment they'll be able to use in the near future, we hope. Oh, that's so great. I'm so thankful that, that you shared that. I mean, I don't think most of our listeners uh, really fully understand all the stuff that goes on in the background um, at March of Dimes and the research and uh, development of, of ways to detect so that you have a better chance of ensuring that a premature baby isn't born. Um, right. So... That's fantastic. Do, anything else besides premature babies that that March of Dimes works on? Well, one of the things we're very concerned about is, and, and this is a startling fact, March, um, the United States is the most dangerous developed country in the world to have a baby. Oh, um, I did not know that. Yeah, it, it's absolutely startling. And... Um, we have a high maternal mortality and morbidity rate. Um, we have a mom who dies from pregnancy or birth-related complications every 12 hours in the United States. Oh. It's, it's mind-boggling. So that, that's something March of Dimes is really um, just lately are, are looking more into of why is this happening. Um, it shouldn't be like that in the United States. We should not be the worst developed country in the world um, perhaps well, that's the truth first. well that's the truth I mean so are you guys looking at the whole process and saying what's going on here is what can we do to change that definitely definitely um, a, Does lot, that involve a lot of, you know and women of color are at a higher percentage of um, um, birth um, mortality and morbidity than really? um, Caucasians, yeah. Why so, is that? I, I, I don't know. Okay. Um, I honestly can't tell you, but that is something we are looking into. Some of it is disparities, of course. You know, some, okay. some is um, access to care, um, okay. access to 
to doctors, access to uh, a hospital. Um, so much, much of it, well, I don't know about much of it, but some of it can be um, related to access to care. You know, um, we talked a little bit about um, how March of Dimes receives their funding, and um, I'd like you to talk a little bit about how that's funded and where the majority of your money does come from. Well, the majority of our money does come from our walk event, which, as you know, you know, we had to make it go virtual. So um, we're, we've come up with ways for people to still participate but, but still stay home and be safe. Um, we've got, we've uh, partnered with Charity Miles. So people can go to the March of Dimes website. They can um, download um, the Charity Miles app, and they can count their steps, and they can put a goal of how many miles they want to walk by a certain amount of time and let their family and friends know that they are going to be, you know, stepping up for babies. And people can donate um, per mile, you know, a quarter a mile, 50 cents a mile, a dollar a mile, whatever. And, um, and then by, on May 15th, you know, when they reach their goal, hopefully everybody reaches their goal, then people can donate whatever they pledge per mile. And the funny thing about this is when um, March of Dimes first started doing their walk, it was a pledge per mile walk. And they would walk 25, 26 miles, and they would get their card stamped every mile along the way and then bring it back to the people who pledged to them and say, okay, I walked 25 miles, and then they would collect the money. Um, oh. So kind of like going back to our beginnings, um, but in, in a little bit of a different way. Wow, that's fantastic. You know, um, I uh, shared a story with you about my involvement with the March of Dimes, and it yeah. was actually uh, I long before you and I ever crossed paths, uh, I was uh, involving, uh, I used to own my own insurance agency in Vancouver, Washington, and I would involve my staff and uh, Farmers Insurance Agency, and you had indicated that Farmers at the time was a big supporter. Right. Um, uh, no, so at that time, I was very uh, intrigued and involved. And to that point, uh, we vigorously raised money every year for the cause. And, and to this day, I still feel very uh, connected to it. And um, even after I sold my agency, uh, there's uh, some of the staff members that uh, were with us uh, to this day continue to uh, do the walk every year and uh, raise money for the cause. And uh, so I feel very good to know that there are people you know, that I've somehow continued to spawn support for this organization, which uh, I really honestly know do just really amazing things. And not just for for a few, but you, you do. The, the good that you do is really for everyone. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm so glad that you have a, a back history with us, and, and now you're in Hawaii, and, and your support is still continuing. Um, so we, we really appreciate that. You know, it's, um, it's, it's uh, of all the places in the world that, that I've had the, the, the privilege to live, Hawaii is one of the most generous, kind, and giving uh communities that I've ever been privileged to be involved with. So I'm really happy to be here, really happy to help in any way that I can. And uh, and, it, and I think you probably have found it a very welcoming environment as well. Oh, yeah. Um, is, uh, so you had also indicated that you don't just do work here on Oahu. You, you actually reach out to the other islands and take care of the entire state. Would you like to speak to that? I, yeah, you know, because a baby born premature on a neighbor island is flown over here to Oahu, and they, they're at Kapiolani. So um, we help a lot of neighbor island families. And, um, you know, many times, in fact, the majority of the time, when a baby's born premature, they're, they're rushed over on, uh, by transport, by air transport. And, of course, the mom gets delivered, so she can't jump on the plane with her baby. So generally the dad will jump on the plane with the baby, um, flies over here, you know, totally unexpected, gets here, has nothing. So, you know, we have um, these little kits we've put together for when they arrive, you know, they, they've got something to help them get started. 
um, and and um, you know we'll hook them up with uh, social workers to make sure you know they can uh, maybe stay at the Ronald McDonald House. We supply them with toiletries and snacks because sometimes they come in the middle of the night. So uh, we just have we just have these kits ready to go for when a, a neighbor island family comes in, and um, you know they they're. they're it's really especially hard for the neighbor island families because if their baby is going to be in the NICU for a long time and, and they work or they have other kids at home, um, sometimes they fly back and forth and can't be here the whole time. Or sometimes maybe, you know, once the mom gets here, she'll stay here, but the dad will go home. So it's, it's really important that we are there with those families and they've, they've got somebody to talk to and... Um, you know, one of the things we do with, you know, Kapiolani is a beautiful new NICU, and now all, all the parents, uh, all the babies are in a private room, so the parent can be in a private room with their baby. But it's lost some of the connection with other parents. So we do these get-togethers so the parents can meet each other and support each other because it's, it really is helpful to know you're not in this alone. You've got oh, yeah. somebody right next to you that understands what you're going through and so we try to put these get-togethers for these families so that they can talk to each other and um, just have that kind of support as well and we also will bring in parents who have been through this and um, and the parents going through it love having a parent who has been through it and understands them somebody they can talk to as well that's not going through it anymore but totally gets it and, mm -hmm. and be there to support them. So we, we bring these type of groups together too to help them. Wow, that's that's amazing. I mean, I've never gone through that, but I have two beautiful granddaughters whom I'm absolutely smitten by and I just can't <laughs> imagine going through a process with them and every time I see them and they're so happy and healthy and running around and just excited and having fun, this is a good opportunity to to be grateful and to yeah. reach out and help other families that are maybe not as fortunate in that respect, but then giving them every opportunity, if you will, to uh, to help them, their family, and this newborn child um, get to that place in their lives. Right. I think that's absolutely amazing. So what has kept you, you've been with them for 25 years. That's amazing. What, I mean, that's, that's remarkable. So let's talk about that a little bit. I mean, wow, what has kept you going all these years? Well, you know, for one thing, it's the families. Um, meeting, meeting those families and and seeing the challenges they face and when they like uh, uh, like I said we have these our NICU family support coordinators and so when they tell us oh my gosh that person it was like an angel entering my room you know um, and knowing that we were able to help these families is, is so meaningful um, and my volunteers, I've got the most amazing volunteers. Um, you know, Dave Kennedy is my board chair. John Henry Felix has been a March of Dimes volunteer since he was a little boy in 1938, going door to door with his mother collecting dimes. And he still contributes. He still sits on our board. Um, he's, he, Get, he and Dr. Sayu came together and gave a major gift to help support our um, prematurity research centers because uh, they know how important the research is. Um, oh, yeah. Howard, Howard Lee, um, he was so excited to be chairing our 50th anniversary of our walk this year. And um, unfortunately, as you know, we know we're not going to be getting together at Kapiolani Park with thousands of people to celebrate that. But Howard's been amazing and the committee he put together um, I just I have there's so many people that that if I have a problem if I need help on something I pick up the phone and there's no hesitation you know so these volunteers um, that that are supporting of us supportive of us the families we help um, it just it you know it just um, it's wonderful it's it's a great it's a great way to work uh, when you've got people like that that participate in everything you do. 
That's amazing. You know, um, one of the things that we talked a little bit about was, uh, so do you, your funding and where the money from that comes from. So is there government support for that? No, um, all our, our, you know, our walk raises more than 60% of our money. Um, that's um, a big percentage. Is, yeah, it's a big percentage. And in Hawaii, we've got a couple other special events we do. Um, we do um, an event where we honor somebody in the community. And this year, for our 25th anniversary of honoring people in our community, we are going to focus on moms. And um, we are, are um, honoring Cheryl Sanders Dickerson. Um, her son, Kelly Sanders, is, is the um, vice president. I think his title is now vice president of Highgate, which oversees um, seven hotels here in Hawaii. And one of them is the Elohilani. And his, he, so Kelly was born premature. And um, so his mom, Cheryl, has, has been a great supporter of the March of Dimes and many organizations in the community. And she's, she's a, um, somebody who understands what it's like to have a premature baby. So we're honoring Cheryl and we're honoring Dr. Angela Pratt. Um, Dr. Pratt is OBGYN. She takes care of moms and every day. And so um, she's, and she's a, a board member of the March of Dimes. And uh, she's a donor. She she helped provide the funding for us to start a program at um, Kapiolani Hospital called Supportive Pregnancy Care. And what it is, it, it it's um, group prenatal care. And um, we were going to be starting it early this year, but now with uh, now that we can't get together in groups, um, we'll probably start it later in the year. But March of Dimes also stepped up for that because we already had some um, supportive pregnancy care um, groups around the country. And so they developed a way to bring them together still and do their education hours um, virtually um, on Zoom. So um, that, that will continue. That's fantastic. You know, um one of the things that uh, I think a lot of people who would like to get involved and don't really know how to go about that, how would what would you suggest they do? Because obviously you have different echelons of need, and um, the more volunteers you have, obviously, the, the more outreach that you can have. And so what would somebody do if they wanted to volunteer? They can call our office um, at 973-2155. And um, we, can, we can talk to them about what their interests are, and we can find a place to fit them in. You know, much of our volunteers are usually for our events, um, but and there's uh, other ways they can volunteer. They can volunteer with our NICU specialists and help coordinate activities for the families. So that's a fun way to volunteer. Um, and a lot of people love doing that because they love getting to meet these families and knowing they have a, they, they can see um, who they're supporting. And so that's another way uh, people can volunteer with us. That's great. So, um, you know, I just want to um, wrap things up here. We've come to the end of our show, and I, I can't thank you enough for taking time out of your busy schedule to speak to us today and be a part of the show. Um, and. I guess we'll have some information at the end of the show that tells people how to how to get involved, how to get in touch, okay. and um, and hopefully we'll have you on the show again one time. So I appreciate it. So thank you so well, much. Thank you. thank you so much, Brandon. I really appreciate you giving us this opportunity to share what we do at the March of Dimes, and um, I thank you. I, it was really wonderful. Thank you. I appreciate it as well. Have a terrific day. You too. Thank you. Stay safe.